Good morning. I'm Aya Wimala, and it's a beautiful day, mid-September now. It's a beautiful day here. Hurricanes down in the south again. It looks like much less, uh, much less of the wind, but I know uh, in Texas they're really worried about flash flooding and things that can come later. And the, but the, the winds aren't anything like they were for Ida. But my goodness, a lot of hurricanes already. So be thinking about praying for all the beings, all the living beings being affected by the hurricanes, the fires, all of the uh, places where in our country and so many others where COVID is flaring, the, the Delta variant is flaring up and maybe a third variant and um, many things for us to be sending out metta and sending out our compassion and trying to find ways we can be of help. Maybe helping in our communities, something close to home and if you have the means, you can find very good groups to donate to. Um, I saw Karen Lundell, who's a friend of Blue Lotus, had, had donated to uh, the Indiana uh, Temple. Devananda is the, uh, the abbot, Venerable uh, Devananda, and they had a campaign to raise money for mattresses that were needed in Sri Lanka and that was probably in hospitals and community uh, the mattresses for people because of the need the need being so high in their hospitals so I, I just uh, learned about that from something Karen shared so there are things we can do locally and things we can do globally and we really need to be thinking, thinking about our own safety, uh, having the vaccination, wearing masks, doing what we can to uh, not, not get into arguments with people or debates, trying to be peace and trying to follow that. Uh, remember the story about the acrobats where the younger students said, no, uh, let's each take care of ourselves. And by taking care of ourselves, we're taking care of the other. And that's, this is the, uh, I think this pandemic is a great lesson in, in that principle that the Buddha emphasized. We take care of ourselves and that in itself is helping others. And when we are taking care of ourselves, and we're able to help others in, in other ways. But we, we have to remember that that's an important part of his teachings. So let's read some more. This is a really, we're on our pilgrimage, our, our pilgrimage to India to the sacred sites. So that's the site of the Buddha's birth and the area where he gave his first talk and outlined uh, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path and uh, his first successful talk and then his enlightenment and then the place where he died and achieved his Parinibbana, his final liberation. So we're reading from Ken and Visaka Kawasaki's um, ed edition that they've put together based on so many different pilgrimages they've taken or they've led people on to India. And uh, using the teachings of the Buddha, Buddha it's, as it says on the cover, to enhance readings from Buddhist texts to enhance a pilgrimage to the sacred sites. So we're on day 12 of our 35 day journey and the reading is this is a very good sutta. You probably read it or uh, heard heard it mentioned in talks, and because it's very it's it's very uh, recognizable. It's very 
I don't want to say famous, it's a very typical sutta in the Buddhist teaching. It's called Worshiping the Six Directions. And he's talking about, he's talking to a young man about being aware of, of uh, meaningless rituals that you might be going through and you were maybe you were taught those rituals but you really don't understand what you're doing they become they become maybe uh, a memory of a parent or someone who taught you but you don't even really realize what what the ritual what meaning it has and maybe the meaning has been lost because of uh, it being so traditional or kind of the meaning has been lost and the Buddha's reminding us about that reminding us what is more important than just practicing uh, meaningless rituals it's a good good talk and I'll read that and that's from the Dikha Nikaya the longer suttas but this is not this is just a couple of pages uh, Dikha Nikaya 31 and then the reflection and we can begin meditating through all of this as I read the reading or when I start on the reflection reflections on grief from the Sutta Nipata 3.8 and reflections on grief we all have probably been experiencing some of that at some point or maybe at many many points over the last few years uh, with COVID and the ups and downs and friends and people or family we've lost people we've been we've seen become very ill people we haven't been able to visit or be with when they have been ill or even our families that we haven't been able to see so let's read this day 12 the reading is worshiping the six directions one morning a young man named Sigalaka got up early and went outside Rajagaha with wet clothes and hair he began a ceremony of paying homage at the same time the Buddha left the squirrel sanctuary of Vilavana and began walking toward Ragaha, Raja, Rajagaha. This is a city that's out the villages, Rajagaha, for alms, for his uh, daily food. When he saw the young man, he stopped and asked, Young man, why are you paying homage like that? Venerable sir, Sigalaka answered, as my father was dying, he told me that I should get up early to pay homage to the six directions, the east, the south, the west, the north, the nadir, and the zenith. It is out of respect for my father's words that I honor and hold sacred that I am doing this. That is not the right way to pay homage to the six directions. Well, venerable sir, it would be good if the Blessed One would teach me the proper way. Then listen carefully and I will speak. Yes, venerable sir. These six things are to be regarded as the six directions. The east denotes mother and father. The south denotes teachers. The west denotes wife and children. The north denotes friends and companions. The nadir denotes servants, workers, and helpers. The zenith denotes ascetics and brahmins. There are five ways in which children should attend to their parents as the eastern direction. Having been supported by their parents, they should support them, perform their duties to them, keep up the family tradition, be worthy of their heritage, and after their parents' deaths, distribute gifts on their behalf. There are five ways in which the parents, so attended to by their children, should reciprocate. They should restrain them from evil, 
support them in doing good, teach them a skill, find them suitable partners, and in due time, hand over their inheritance to them. In this way, the eastern direction is covered, making it at peace and free from fear. There are five ways in which students should attend to their teachers as the southern direction. They should rise to greet them, wait on them, be attentive, serve them, and master the skills they teach. There are five ways in which the teachers, thus attended to by their students, should reciprocate. They should give thorough instruction, make sure the students have grasped what should be grasped, give them a thorough grounding in all skills, recommend them to their friends and colleagues, and provide them with security in all directions. In this way, the southern direction is covered making it at peace and free from fear. There are five ways in which a husband should attend to his wife as the western direction. He should honor her, praise her, be faithful to her, give authority to her, and provide for her security. There are five ways in which a wife, thus attended to by her husband, should reciprocate. She should properly organize her work, be kind to the servants, be faithful to her husband, protect his property, and be skillful and diligent in her duties. In this way, the Western direction is covered, making it at peace and free from fear. There are five ways in which a person should attend to friends and companions as the Northern direction. One should give gifts, use kind words, look after their welfare, treat them like oneself, and keep one's word. There are five ways in which friends and companions thus attended to by a person should reciprocate. They should look after the friend when he is inattentive, look after the property when he is careless, be a refuge when she is afraid, stand by her when she is in trouble, and show concern for her children. In this way, the northern direction is covered, making it at peace and free from fear. There are five ways in which a master should attend to his servants and workers as the nadir. He should arrange their work according to their strength supply them with food and wages, look after them when they are ill, share special delicacies with them, and let them off work at the right time. There are five ways in which servants and workers thus attended to by their master should reciprocate. They should get up before him, go to bed after him, take only what they are given, do their work properly, and be bearers of his praise and good repute. In this way, the nadir is covered, making it at peace and free from fear. There are five ways in which a person should attend to ascetics and Brahmins as the zenith. One should be kind in deed, speech, and thought, keep open house for them, and supply their bodily needs. There are five ways in which ascetics and Brahmins, thus attended to by a person, should reciprocate. They should restrain that person from evil, encourage the person to do good, be compassionate towards that one, teach the person what he has not heard, and point out to her the way to heaven. In this way, the zenith is covered making it at peace and free from fear. And that's the Diha Nikaya 31. So those meaningless rituals, and the, the, the young man would uh, have, he had wet clothes and hair, and he began that ceremony at a crossroads. 
<clears throat> and that was a tradition his father had taught him, and it was honoring the six directions. So he would bathe early in the morning, get up and bathe and wash his hair, and then go out to the uh, probably a dusty uh, road intersection and, and do a ceremony just with himself that was that he'd been taught by his, his father had asked him to do in his honor. But he had no idea what the meaning was. He had no, uh, he was doing it out of respect for his father's memory, but, but he was unaware of what he was doing and the Buddha's telling him, uh, no, what, what, what you need to be doing is honoring, honoring the six directions a different way. And he explained to him what those six, he could symbolize those six directions as. So it's a beautiful story about, about our own actions and uh, the Buddha always said not to be, not to get caught up in meaningless rituals and dogma, you know, not to, not to believe those things that just because we had been taught and especially when we don't even understand. So you can think about rituals in your life. So now why don't we sit? So just sit in the posture that you're comfortable with for your practice. So you might be on the floor, so you can be on your back. You might be sitting, you might be uh, walking, and you want your body now to be relaxed and comfortable. And recognizing that we are comfortable for a while but our restlessness is usually what ends up making us become comfortable and we become restless because we're not used to being still so be as comfortable as you can be staying awake uh, notice if you become restless and sometimes we feel like we have to move, but it might just be that restlessness. It might just be our body uh, just wanting to wiggle like a little kid who can't stay still. And sometimes if we're aware of that, we can allow our, our body to just stay still. It's just a good practice. It, bring, it helps us become more aware of our body, which we're always working with. No matter what our meditation posture is, we're always working with this body. This body contains our six sense doors, and our mind is part of this body. And uh, we can even we can even learn things about ourselves just being aware of the body as we sit to meditate. So I'll read the reflections, and then we'll continue to sit together for our time. Reflections on Grief Observe how others born into this world, according to their comma, tremble under the specter of death. However people think, things turn out to be otherwise, such as the opposite nature of things. Observe thus the nature of the world. Even if a person were to live a hundred years or more, that person must still yield life, at last bereft of friends and relatives. Therefore, listen to the wise and the holy, and seeing a deceased friend or relative, control your weeping. Reflect on the departure of your beloved ones by thinking that separation is natural. Just as one would douse a burning house with water, let one who is steadfast and wise remove grief as quickly as the wind disperses a handful of cotton. Let a person desirous of their own welfare pluck out the shafts of wails and grief which they themselves planted. Having plucked out these shafts and having attained mental peace, one becomes blessed and free from grief, overcoming all sorrows. I 
just be with your breath. Thinking about living in harmony with the truth that we see even in nature, that we see all around us. That just living in sync with that is finding our peace. their minds become more and more steady. We develop the wisdom, the insight that we need to really see the world as it is. And that leads to the end of our sorrows. So even if you're just struggling to keep your mind at peace for a few minutes, that's very important, valuable work to be doing. Just be with yourself. Be with your breath. Let go, let the thoughts come and go. Let everything coming in through your sense doors, let it come and go. Be aware of it all. Be at peace with everything. Just allow things to be the way they are. we find peace in ourselves, it gets easier and easier to be in the world and not have it be pushing us around. And the more peace we experience, the more others feel that peace and we create a refuge for others. We can send that peace out in those six directions. When we practice metta, we send it out in all directions.
So we can honor the six directions, changing the wording to fit our more contemporary world, but keeping the same intention. And think of the, all of those, think of those directions and how you would describe them in your life. Include that in your morning practice. as part of your metta practice. So may everyone be well, be happy, be safe, and be at peace. And may all beings everywhere be well, be safe, and be at peace. Thank you. Now if you can keep continue sitting, it's a good time for you to sit. This is this is a good way to just keep going, maybe even five more minutes. And uh, let it let it give you let it help you build up that peace inside you. Let it help you calm your mind so you can see clearly and uh, be developing that wisdom and insight that, that we're all looking for eventually. But first we have to find that calm mind, that, and that's, uh, that's no small deal to do. Our minds are usually rather chaotic. So thanks for being such a big part of my practice, and I'll see you again on Thursday. I'm hoping to maybe be outside somewhere recording. We'll see how that works out. Thank you.